well, sushi time again, this time, instead of just eating like a boring person, you know, in front of you guys, I decided to do a QA and a ask you guys in the, on Instagram to ask me a couple of questions. So in this video, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to respond to your questions. First question from my brother. What was your hardest challenge in bodybuilding? Well, to be honest, the hardest thing was eating. That was the hardest part because uh, being very skinny, I was, uh, as you know, 48 kilograms, very skinny. The hardest part was to eat. I was not eating breakfast in the beginning and then I had to, to really improve this aspect and to start, uh, start eating more. Yeah, I decided to start with this question because I'm eating right now and this was the biggest challenge, really eating, taking all those calories, realizing that nutrition is the most important part. That was really the, the, the hardest, the hardest part. <laughs> Besides that, training, yeah, it was hard, but uh, slowly I improved, it got better, but uh, definitely the hardest part was the nutrition, eating more. Second question, hybrid training is a good one, a complex one. Strength training plus endurance is more popular these days. What is your opinion about it? If we roll back to the first question, my nutrition was the hardest part. So if I would start from the beginning, would I do a hybrid training? No. And the reason is that it was, even like this, it was very hard for me to take all those calories to be in a caloric surplus. If I also do an endurance and running and a lot of cardio, I will never be in a caloric surplus. So for me, definitely was not working. For hard gainers, it's not a good combination. Definitely not. But there are a lot of people who want to lose weight who want to be in a calorie deficit, and definitely hybrid tra training is what I advise to combine to combine weights workout as a foundation and then cardio and endurance to be on top of that. If you manage to take all those calories in to do the endurance part and to still be in a calorie surplus in order to put on muscle, then go for it. You can do it, yeah. But for me, it was definitely, that was, that was impossible. It was extremely hard, even without the endurance, without cardio, let alone with cardio. This one was delicious. Salmon, it's salmon with cheese rice. That was a good one. I really have to get in the moment because I'm surrounded by people. This is so awkward. Out of all sushis, the semi-cooked salmon, for me, this is the favorite. It's amazing. The following question, it's a nice one. It's from one of my clients. When will you involve dance moves and music into your trainings? Well, for those of you who don't know, I was a dancer before. I did dance sports for 10 years. And uh, that's why she's asking this question. Where will I fall? Uh, only in between the sets. <laughs> I don't know, it will be cool to have like a, some type of uh, hybrid training with <laughs> weights workouts and dance. <laughs> that would be interesting. I should create this new, new concept of working out with weights. And dancing in between the sets. <laughs> but as you already saw me, I'm very zoned when I work out, so <laughs> no, <laughs> it will not be easy to combine these two. And the next one is a very nice question and something that I that I still have in mind: uh, when I will step on stage. This is a very good question and uh, really it's uh, something, that, uh, something that I want to do. I'm still young, you know, I'm 29 and uh, I really want to, to make this uh, move, to make this step and uh, to compete. I would definitely want to have this experience before, uh, you know, it's not too late. First, I need to recover from my injury, my elbow injury. But then I need to have a very good bulky phase in order to pack a bit more muscle 
and then I will have in mind to, to compete. So probably uh, in a, a year or two you will see me on stage, hopefully if everything goes well. Uh, yeah, I definitely have this in mind. I think realistically it will be in two years from now. I will definitely want to do this step. What I'm afraid of is that I might get addicted to it. Oh, that is a bit rough. I might get addicted to it. You know, I'm a very competitive person and I might do it a lot. Next question for my fiance. Do you love me? Do you love me? The next one. How do I get to lose weight? Okay. Straight to the point. Yeah, sure. Oh, no worries. It's a very simple question, but super complex because it depends. It depends on every person. First of all, we need to see how many calories we need in a day. How many calories we need to consume in a day. So how we calculate that is by having the basal metabolic rate. Then we have the NEAT, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is how much body burns in order to process our food. And then we have the exercise. Now let's take them individually. We have the BMR, so we know that the more muscle mass we have, the higher the BMR is, the basal metabolic rate, because the muscle is an active tissue. So it burns calories just to stay on our body. So people with more muscle mass, it's easier for them to stay lean and get lean. That's why working up with weights, it's so important to build the muscle mass and to maintain our muscle mass. Then we have the NEAT. So this is the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This is the, the movement that we do besides exercising. Walking, washing dishes, cleaning the house, going up the stairs, doing groceries. Every movement that is not an exercise. This need can vary a lot. Imagine someone who wakes up, gets inside the car, drives to the office, stays inside the office for nine hours, then goes back in the car, goes back home, sits on the couch. That person's need is very low. It can be two, three hundred calories a day. Now imagine someone who works in the construction, goes to work by bike. That person is active all day long. That person can burn more than two thousand calories just from the need. So need is the part that we can really take advantage of and it's so easy to increase the need. You don't need to, to have a harder workouts. You know, just basic thing by walking more, park your car further. You know, easy stuff like this that, you know, make a big change. Let's see. Second round is here. Don't take the elevator, go, go by stairs. Or whenever you do the groceries, park the car a bit further. You know, basic things like this. Don't take the bus or the taxi, go by feet. Easy stuff like this that improve the need. Take a look at your day and see what you can improve and how you can increase the need. This makes a huge change. Imagine instead of burning two, three hundred calories, burning a thousand calories a day just from the need. Then immediately puts you in a calorie deficit and you will start making progress. When we have higher protein in our diet, the body burns calories to break down the protein that we ingest. When we have a higher fat percentage in our diet, with the fat the body doesn't need to do much. It can be easily transported in the fat tissue. But with the protein, it has to work, the body has to work in order to break it down. So it has to burn more calories. By having a high protein diet, you will not only maintain your muscle mass, because it's important to maintain it when you lose fat. You want to lose fat, not to lose weight. But you also help yourself to lose fat by increasing the TDED. You have to be active, you have to work out with weights and to add carbon top. If, let's say, with all these together, you, you, you end up needing 2,000 calories, and you manage to eat more than 2,000 calories a day, you will not lose weight, you will gain a surplus, you will actually gain weight. 
So this is how we calculate the deficit which we have to do. We calculate all these four, and then from this one, we have to make sure that we are in a deficit. We have to be consistent with it. You know, I, I like to say, to give this example, we can have the perfect car, the perfect whatever, Lamborghini, Mercedes, it doesn't matter. You can have the tank full of gas, oil, everything is perfect. You still have to drive on the highway from point A to point B. You cannot teleport from one point to another. So it takes time, it takes consistency, and you have to stick with it. How does age interfere with muscle growth? How do we adapt stuff in our 40s? It's a very good one. So first question, how does age interfere with muscle growth? We have to keep in mind that after 40, unfortunately we lose 1% of muscle per year and 3% of strength per year, which is a lot. Imagine if you are 50 years old and you didn't do anything about it, you lost 10% of your muscle mass and 30% of your strength. Now the only way to stop that and to combat that or to prevent that is by working out with weights. That's the only way possible to stop that. This is why I preach all the time for everyone, even if you don't want to become a bodybuilder for my clients, you have to make the weights workouts a foundation. You don't make the cardio, the elliptical, the treadmill or the other classes a foundation. The weights workout should be the foundation three, four times a week. And then on top of that, if you want to do cardio, if you need to do cardio, do that. But the weights workouts should be the main priority and you should do this for the rest of your life. The second question, how do we adapt in our 40s? Definitely work out with weights. Make sure you have a good execution. We don't want to, 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 we don't want to have any injury. Make the proper execution the main priority. Make sure you, you work out properly. You have a good execution. Take a coach if you need inside the gym. Take five, ten sessions with the coach just for that person, for the coach to teach you properly the movements. That's the single best solution. The next question is also a very interesting one, but it was asked face to face. How can I make my jawline visible? I've seen this. Uh, he was telling me that he saw these uh, products that uh, you, you can work your jawline and make them make the jawline visible. Now let's think about it. The jawline is actually the bone structure. If you're overweight and you're using those type of uh, tools or whatever they are called, you want to chew, they are chewing tools, so you just have to chew them. You know? uh, first of all, you look ridiculous. Second of all, they will never work because if you're overweight, you will never see your jawline. You have to get your fat percentage low in order to get leaner. When we lose fat, we lose fat overall from the entire body, so including your face. If you see bodybuilders in the off-season, their faces are round. When you see them in the off, in the on-season when they are competing, they they are, have this super leanish face. So you lose fat overall, you lose water retention from your face. This way, your jawline becomes much more visible. So do those products work? They work from, for your muscles, as you work your muscles, but they will never make your jawline visible, unless you are lean. So don't be lazy, don't try to find these uh, easy ways out to just sit on the couch and chew on that, uh, on that rubber. You have to work out, you have to be in a calorie deficit, you have to get lean. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video in which I feed myself and also answer a few of your questions. Don't forget to check out up here a few other videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.